Hello everyone, if you're appearing for the ESAT examinations this year, here is a type of problem that usually poses a bit of a challenge to all students. So this question I have chosen from the 2022 paper of ENGA. As you know that these exams have now been bundled into one exam, the ESAT. So you don't have your NSAA exams as well as the ENGA exams. We have one overall exam, ESAT now. So this particular question caught my eye as I was browsing through the papers. So this question uses elements of combinatorics as well as basic probability, okay, as well as some concepts of geometry. So let us look into it. What does this question ask? This question says three different numbers are chosen at random from root one, root two, root three, root four, and root five. Now these four numbers are not given randomly, right? There is a thought behind this. So root one, root one is basically one, right? And then root two, root three are irrational, and then root four is two. Alright, so despite us knowing that the square roots of 1 and 4 exist, we have kept it. It gives the sum a bit more stylish and professional look. But do not fear, you do not need to keep 2 as square root of 4. So this is basically 1 root 2 root 3 and 2 and root 5. Okay, what is the probability that 3 numbers, these 3 numbers from these 5 numbers form the sides of a right angle triangle. Now right angle triangle is also very specific because you know that there is a condition to get right angle triangles and that is the Pythagoras theorem. Anyway, uh, before we delve into Pythagoras theorem, we will just have to ask what is the main takeaway from this question, right? The main question is what is the probability that these form the three sides of a right angle triangle? So whenever we calculate probability, we know that the theoretical definition of probability is basically NE by NS, right? So total number of elements that come from our event divided by the total number of elements in the sample space, right? So this is the total number of outcomes. This is the favorable outcomes. You divide them, you get the probability of the event. All right. For this particular problem, we will first have to identify what the number in the sample space is. Okay. So you can figure out the denominator. Figuring out the numerator will require a few more steps using Pythagoras theorem and all, but denominator we can figure out easily. It's basically the number of ways when in which we can choose three numbers from this set of five, right? So that should not be difficult. It's just five C three, right? You have learned from combinatorics. So N S will be five C three in some books. This can be also written as five three. Okay. So this number is basically five factorial divided by three factorial into two factorial. So we know five factorial is uh, 120, three factorial is six, this is two ten. So denominator is 10. That is for sure. Okay, so this immediately eliminates option A and option F and option D. So three options are gone. All right, because if we know that the denominator is 10, uh, three is not a factor of it. Okay, so that part is gone. And we have one, two, three, four options to work with. All right, now we will see how we can select the correct options. So we have to figure out how many of these will form a right angle triangle, right? So there is not much finesse that we can do here <laughs> we would just have to do it manually all right so a square plus b square will be c square so this question in its code is asking do any three distinct integers from one two three or five satisfy a pythagorean triple all right so i hope you know what a pythagorean triplet is a pythagorean triplet or a pythagorean triple is basically three numbers such that a square plus b square is equal to c square right so if this is satisfied then these three numbers will form a right angle triangle and vice versa. So if these are the sides of a right angle triangle, they will obey this. So Pythagoras theorem goes both ways. All right. So this is what we have to figure out from these five sets of numbers. Now, how are we working through this problem? So we just have to check some combinations. All right. Now here the numbers are given in their square root format, right? So their squares will be the numbers itself, isn't it? One, two, three, four, and five. So we will just have to check how many additions will lead to the numbers that we desire. All right. So let's say I have uh, the first one is one plus two is equal to three. That will hold. That means root over of one whole square plus root over of two whole square is equal to root over of three whole square. Right. This is the explanation that we are working with. But uh, that is given in the square root form. Right. So basically you have the square roots and when we square them we get the actual sides so i wrote it a bit weirdly so i'll write it again root one square plus root two square will give you root three whole square 
so that means one two three one plus two is equal to three this means that and since this holds this means root one root two and root three could be the sides of a Pythagorean triangle of a right angle triangle obeying the Pythagoras theorem okay now this is the same as root two one and th root three right the order shouldn't matter because if it's a triangle you can flip it that way and it'll still remain a right angle triangle okay so one plus two is equal to three we have one of these we also have one plus three is equal to four right we will look for unique sets so one plus three is equal to four we'll also have one plus four is equal to five right so three from here any anything else that we can make i think we can make two plus three is equal to five as well right so i can make two plus three is equal to five anything else i could make three plus two well that is the same i could make four plus one all of these are the same right so how how do you figure out these you take one you will have two three four to add up to five right now if you remember you cannot subtract anything okay because these are triangles so subtraction is not allowed you will only have to have positive values so also let's say you have after this you have three from one you take two you will have one we cannot write because one and two are taken so two will give three two will give four four cannot be done right because that will give you six so that is not allowed so from three I'll not get two because three and two are already used I'll not get one because that is already used here and I'll not get anything else from four I can only get one that is already been used so these are the only four cases so the probability will be four by ten so four by ten will give you two by five that is the correct option E okay so this was a bit of a tricky problem in the sense that it looked weird all right so there will be questions like this in ESAT exams where uh, the initial problem might appear a bit tricky but if you try to open up the problem like peeling an onion <laughs> you will get to the core and the core problem is not that difficult all right I'm sure most of you will be able to solve these type of problems and just as a quick plug-in if you require a bit more practice on these sorts of problems I have a ESAT mathematics practice book that I have written myself that book has 500 plus exam style questions and six full mock tests okay it is available on Amazon and I'll put a link to that in the description of this video all right do check out the book and also come back to the channel if you have any further requests on questions I will look through multiple papers and if I find some weird problems like this I will help you solve those because uh, the market on study materials for ESAT is not that high okay so what I find is that the official materials are good enough that is why nobody has written any further books on it because you don't require any study material apart from the official study ones those are very good they are very well written and those should be uh, completely okay for you to go through but the problem is there are not many practice problems all right so these are the previous year ENGA questions and from there you can find out a few solutions but then again those are limited right you only have 20 questions and you probably have six or seven past year questions so that is 140 no one is clearing an exam practicing just 100 questions no so that is why I decided to write a book and as I told you you will find the link in the description and that's it I'll end the video here thank you all for tuning in and I'll hope to see you in another video bye take care